Oh, this week we've been looking at renewable energy in Australia and its potential for providing an alternative to coal. Tonight we take a look at geothermal energy, an emerging renewable resource with a potentially limitless supply. South Australian firm Petra Therm is leading the race in what's been called a heat rush. The company took our senior correspondent, Brian Thompson, to its facility at Paralana in the Flinders Ranges to see the theory being put into practice. It is a dot on a barren landscape, a large rig in the middle of a vast desert, nothing to look at but everything to shout about. Working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, using a rig which cost $5 million just to bring into the country, Teams of men and women are drilling into the South Australian desert, attempting to prove a technology which could transform power generation in Australia and around the world. We believe that we have um, the superior product in the market. We have to prove that. We have, uh, we have to prove that we can do that in a range of geological locations around the, around the country. And when we do, there's no reason why. And there's absolutely no reason in terms of the resource why we can't meet the bulk of Australia's energy needs. Geothermal or hot rock technology is a relatively simple concept. Water sourced from below ground is pumped down an injection well into special high heat producing granites of around 200 degrees. The water then flows back to the surface through a second well and is used to drive a turbine which produces electricity. The water is then reused, the entire process leaving no environmental legacy for future generations. It's not just clean and green, it is also in plentiful supply. Unlocking just 1% of the geothermal energy here in Australia would provide the country with 26,000 times its annual energy needs. Unlike other renewables, geothermal is not dependent on the weather, but like coal, it is cheap and provides baseload 24-hour-a-day power. We believe it'll be uh, the last cost renewable by 2020, and we believe by 2050 we'll actually be able to compete with coal without subsidy. So that's a real um, you know, longer-term target, but the, because of that huge potential uh, and low price with base load, it's too big an opportunity not to go for. The only problem is it is not quite as simple as it seems, certainly not as simple as the conventional geothermal power associated with places like New Zealand and Iceland. But what we're doing here is we're drilling a little bit deeper. We're drilling instead of two or three kilometres, we're drilling to four kilometres. There's a lot more engineering involved. We have to fracture the rocks. The fractures don't already exist. Uh, and also we're adding water to the system. In conventional systems, the water's already in place. So there's this, this extra engineering component which adds the, the extra risk. Brisbane-based firm Geodynamics knows about the risks only too well. It is one of more than 70 companies taking part in what's being called the heat rush. It was on the verge of powering the outback township of Inaminka with geothermal energy until it suffered a blowout in one of its wells. Well, there will be challenges. Doing what we're doing is not without risk. Uh, but I feel that we're well equipped now to tackle those risks successfully over the next few years and bring the promise of, the, of, the, of geothermal resources to the market. But to get that far, they will need financial assistance, and a lot of it. Just two weeks ago, the federal government gave both Petrotherm and Geodynamics new multi-million dollar grants to assist them to produce electricity in a commercial quantity. If and when they do that, more money will be needed to get the power from the South Australian desert to the electricity grid. But from then on, the costs are minimal and the hopes are high. If we can make it work here, and we're one of the easiest places to make it work based on our geology, this can become a secure emissions-free renewable energy supply for places that don't have indigenous energy supplies like Japan or Boston, where they're, they're remote from oil and, 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 and they may not actually have other uh, energy supplies easily attainable. So this is actually a, a domestic energy security issue as well as low emissions. Which is why countries around the world are closely watching what is happening here in the Australian outback. In South Australia, Brian Thompson, World News Australia.
and you can find more on renewable energy in a special feature on our website where we'll be tracking all the issues leading up to the Copenhagen Climate Change Summit. That's sbs.com.au.